sebou. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Real Talk with Keith Smith, the Wednesday edition. We're going to have a great conversation. We've got, sitting to my right, going around, a pretty awesome panel. Directly across from me is the Chris Fairchild, and I stress on the word the, hey. uh, a Fulvana native, a owner of a national business, and just happens to be my uh, supervisor from my district out in Fulvana County. So we'll let you go ahead and give an intro here in the middle. To his left is Woody Fincham, the Woody Fincham from Fincham Associates. And then round and around third base is uh, Scott Morris. And today we're going to kind of start off talking a little bit about Fulvana County. If you want to join the conversation, please go ahead and either text me directly at 434 5310 795 or why don't you put it in the feed i'm going to be watching my particular facebook page and uh, i'll do my very best to try to get in some comments and and uh suggestions and case studies from folks that are jumping in first thing i need to do is shut off my hearing aids because now i'm hearing myself with my hearing aids but chris do me self introduce yourself and we'll take it from there chris fairchild um grew up in fluvanna raised my family there and now have grandchildren coming up there and um, started my company, National Filter Service there, just over 30 years ago. Still there and um, on the Board of Supervisors and have been for the past um, some, I'm a year and a half in. So um, let's do a grandkid count. What are you up to? I'm sorry, what? How many grandkids are you up to? Number six is on the way. Holy wow. schmoly. I thought I was all out with three. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to take my hearing airing aids out, gentlemen. So I'm reading lips at this particular point. Hunter and Robin have a boy coming up, or that, that's uh, she's I think about five months in with, and they're at the lake, as is true with my granddaughter, and then um, four of them in Lynchburg. So uh, what does it feel like to be a grandfather? Um, at first, I didn't want them posted it on Facebook because it was killing my rap with the women. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but it's, uh, of course, wonderful. And, um, uh, you know, it is true that years bring knowledge and your approach and your thinking, everything about it is different probably than when my kids were little, you know, I, I felt we'd just, there'd always be other days and everything's busy and I feel like I slow down a little bit more with grandchildren. You know, and you can always give them back. Yeah. <laughs> Woody, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, Woody Fincham with Fincham & Associates. Uh, we're a, a regional uh, appraisal company. Um, and I am also a resident of Fluvanna. I've been there since 2017. Uh, moved up here then to be the deputy assessor in Albemarle. And have since been um, in private practice. So that's me. Scott Morris. Tell Scott us. Morris. Um, my family uh, is from and my father is still there in Fluvanna. Um, in in the, just outside of Columbia, um, I grew up there. I uh, now live in Culpeper, but still spend quite a bit of time in the community. And uh, I'm a, a mortgage lender. We help uh, a lot of families in the in the county uh, get into homes and uh, refinance and you know, solve lots of problems. So all your life, right? You're you're a native. Mm -hmm. You're a native. How long have you been living at the lake? Uh, since 17. And I moved there in 86. So we've kind of, and that's kind of what I want to do today is kind of talk a little bit. We'll kick it off on Fulvana County, but we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what Fulvana has grown or hasn't grown from different perspectives, right? Sure. And different perspectives on uh, time in. But before I do that, I want to give you a little bit of a shout out. Um, you know, we talk about all the time on the show about trusted advisors and, and folks helping you get across the line. I had a family member who had a, 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 their mother pass away in La Jolla, in California. Mm -hmm. 
and on Sunday I texted this man and I said, look, I need an appraiser out in La Jolla because we're about ready to list the property out there and, and help folks sell. And within minutes I got a response and by the end of the Sunday I had a, an appraiser set up and out there. So thank you for, thank you for doing that. Thank Happy you for, it. you know, relationships matter in our businesses. Relationships matter sure. in your business. And uh, we would not, we were at a barbecue and I was getting hit with, I got this, I need this help, I need this help, I need this help. And, and uh, Woody dived in and, and, and helped us. Dove. So, <laughs> so, uh, so Chris, we'll kick it off with you a little bit, right? You're on the board. We probably look at things a little bit different on housing, which is great. And this is kind of what we want to talk a little little bit about on that end of it. But from your perspective, from growing up, right, I think Lake Monticello, when you were growing up, was pretty much dirt streets, right, at, at that point? Pretty close. It was tar and pitch. The, the, I have a house at Lake Monticello that, um, that was a gravel road. When I got my driver's license, we could go back in there and, you know, do donuts and everything. And there wasn't anybody that could possibly hear your car doing donuts and that was what 84 or so and now you know there's not a house there's not a lot available within sight anywhere yeah right, right woody so how many from your perspective you know how many lots are left to go ahead and build in in Fulvana county do you, do you got a basic or lake monticello i should say i honestly don't know the residual lots but there's still several out there um you know um a very prolific builder out there is Liberty. They've, they've built a lot of property over the last uh, four or five years. I think the economy has been very kind to them. Has it been un it's probably under 50 now, isn't it, lots? I would have to look, um, and I'm sure I could get the info. I just don't have it at the end. So I, 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 I think there's about under 100 out there, right? And out of that 100, there's a large percentage of them that just are not buildable, right? Or just to be... Yeah, some of them have some really weird slope issues. So, from your perspective, what Fulvana's changed? What, how, how do you how do you look at that from your perspective? Well, I mean, it's it's drastically changed in the last twenty years. Um, I mean, so in when did you graduate? Eighty six. How many people were in your graduating class? I want to say, I, well, I don't know. It's I forget. You graduated? Less than a hundred. Yeah. Noel. <laughs> They let me out. There you go. <laughs> Less than 100? No, no, it's over 100. Okay. So in 1997, there was 140 people in my graduating class. And I think... Maybe it was less than 100. I don't, I don't know. There is uh, somewhere, I believe, uh, close to 400 kids in, uh, in like the... Each each class level at this at this stage, wow. so mine was sixteen hundred. But anyway, that's a well whole. <laughs> different different place. So, uh, Fulvana County. I'm going to focus a little bit on Lake Monticello for the moment. Then we we'll kind of go into this. So, uh, Judah, the, if you can put up the single family detached values difference from two thousand and seventeen to today. Um, so, uh, the important part on that is to take a look at the growth that's been going. So if you would have bought a home in Lake Monticello um, in 2017, it is now six, worth 62% more than it was in 2017. So if you take a look at this graph, it's, it's a steady growth, growth up year, year over year. We're now, you know, roughly in, in Lake Monticello only, we're roughly at $340,000 per home. Does that jive some of your numbers, Woody? That you absolutely. Seen? I mean, we bought in seventeen, and we spent two thirty for a, a you know a four two and a half colonial, and it's worth over four hundred thousand dollars now. I mean, that that's completely jives. I mean, I remember when we first moved here in twenty thirteen. Uh, we lived in Albemarle at that point. Um, Lake Monticello was still recovering uh, from a very heavy hit from the recession, so there was a lot of very affordable homes available. And uh, it's not the case now. So we were talking, just throw this out for the table for everybody to kind of chime in a little bit. We were talking off air before we came on air. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing some future shows and I'm doing performers based on the uh, upzoning that's happening in Charlottesville, just to take a look at it from a developer's perspective on what it's gonna cost. And I've been working on it for a couple of months on it, trying to actually do real 
performers on it on see what impacts this might have on it. But I came across a data which I really didn't look at very closely in the last couple of months. But does anybody in this this table, and I think these two gentlemen already know it, want to take a stab with the area medium income based on HUD's definition? Is from Fulvana County, Charlottesville, Nelson, Louisa, and Green? I think it came in at 90 some, didn't it? Way higher than that. Yeah. We're at $123,000. So the area medium income for Fulvana, Charlottesville, Albemarle, Nelson, they don't do Louisa, Louisa is in a different, different area, is $123,000. So our county that we all live in or come from um, is showing about $123,000 as the area medium income. Does that make any sense to anybody at this table? That's two earners making sixty thousand dollars a piece. Um, that's that seems realistic uh, from that perspective. But uh, what I was getting at with uh, the growth in the county to to this topic of conversation is uh, it, when you look at the the number of homes, the number of kids in schools. Uh, and then the money that it costs, the infrastructure that it costs to support those kids, and then how that impacts your average taxpayer who's living outside of the, kid, the county who becomes then childless like once they've moved on. The tax burden for owning that property is greater now, um, and, and they're supporting uh, things that they're not using anymore. So the retirees in the area, there's, there's much more impact on. Um, and the county long relied on public utilities as a source of income from Virginia Power and then the, the other power plant, uh, rather than uh, the focus that Louisa played on business development in the Zions Crossroad area um, and in able to, to take in tax income from, from those areas. A lot of it now is, is left to real estate taxes and property taxes but, but so, so you're an elected official and, and, and you know we have three rules we never point fingers and all this stuff but collectively how can we switch this switch from all the re residential taxes sitting on rooftops to businesses how, how do we get there um to, to to scott's point so that look i, I i'll just say this straight up my tax, what I pay for my house right now at where I live in Fulvana County, and Chris knows where I live. I made the mistake of giving my address out <laughs> <Yeah>. once before. <laughs> There's a whole restraining order. I there. will not do this. <laughs> it's a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I will not do that again. But I'm actually paying cash out the same amount of money as if I was sitting in Albemarle County. So I live in Fulvana County, to Scott's point, maybe not get the same services as Albemarle, right? But I'm literally my monthly amount of money that I pay for my taxes dollar wise is equal to to uh, Albemarle County. That's never happened in the 30, 35 years I've been here, and there's only so much I can absorb until we have to figure something else out. So what is that something else? Anybody want to jump in while I take a sip? So I'll, I'll say it's of course with anything with any organization. It's uh, revenue and expense. So, um, you know, if we, to, to me, any good organization focuses on expense before they focus on revenue. Um, and if you can cut funds at the same, if you can cut spending at the same revenue amount, then your net's higher without having to grow yourself into more money. And so, um, to me, that's where it starts. And uh, I really couldn't give a crud which way it went, but the reality is we did pay a lot for a high school that raised our tax rate, and um, we're paying for that now, and that's okay. That's that's what's on our plate. On the revenue side, you know, um, real estate, real estate, real estate. Fluvanna was never going to be Louisa and Zion's Crossroads. Um, Louisa has all four corners of 64 and 15. Fluvanna doesn't start until nine tenths of a mile off of 64 on the Palmyra side of 250. So I was on the economic development, uh, I was chair of the Economic Development Commission, I don't know, like 09 or so. And I had people calling me saying, hey, shouldn't you be telling Target that, you know, we're at Zion's Crossroads too? And I said, first of all, or, or to come to our side. I said, well, first of all, 
pretty sure Target knows that Walmart has put a uh, store and a plant there. And two, they're not coming to us right now because Target's not going to go on the other side of 250 while Walmart's seen by 64. Our time will come. So our time is coming. To me, it's starting to backfill now. It's going to hit the Green Springs District, not go any farther there. And our day will be here where they will have um, less business growth in Giants Crossroads because they would have somewhat filled at least that corridor. I'll also mention that along with that, um, Louisa had more than twice the residential growth that Fluvanna had over the past 10 years in great part because of Zion's Crossroads and they've got another 1,500 homes coming right in the Zion's Crossroads hub mm -hmm. as a result of them having that economic development. So bigger often just keeps getting bigger. Anybody want to jump in on that? Yeah, I completely concur with you. They're not going to go past Green Springs. That's a conservation area, so they can't uh, legally unless something changes, and I don't see that ever happening. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's uh, we've been really busy in that section of Louisa. With, uh, we, we do a lot of work for banks that uh, fund development, and, you know, we're doing a ton of stuff, and there's a lot of, lot of land there that they're, they're building on, so that there's going to be a lot more rooftops in Louisa very soon. Yeah. So you're, you're doing uh, A&D appraisals, acquisition and development appraisals yeah. for, for developers that are looking at that. Um, yep. Chris, is there any appetite on the Board of Supervisors to grow the growth area around Zion's Crossroads? Because to your point, it's, so it's, it's actually rather small, right? And if, if we are going to, gr if we're going to try to grow our economic footprint we're, we're pretty limited on what we can do you, you know that area better than 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 most you know is there an appetite to grow because if we don't grow it to your point we're, we're we are boxed in right we may not have green springs going towards palmyra but we've got we're outside the growth area and more than likely we're not going to approve something that's outside the growth area does that make sense Kind of. I mean, yes, there's an appetite for growth there. Um, we have it coming. Um, and the capacity of the water line isn't but so much. Mm -hmm. And so um, I make the argument we need to be intelligent about what we do approve because if it doesn't bring many jobs, it's a big steel, you know, 200, 300,000 square foot building that has a few people in a bathroom in it. Yeah. It's not really doing a whole lot for us. And so. If we've got that small footprint that we need to make hay on, then we need to be sure we make good hay. Then, and the JRW, James River Water Authority line is also in the couple year out future, which will make it possible to grow, grow that growth district if the citizens want it. So what are they doing with the water? You mean the water authority, the mm -hmm. JRWA? It's in the process. You, you know what I'm talking about, the JRWA? It mm -hmm. goes down to the James River and comes into Louisa. This, so this was the one that got halted because somebody didn't do an historic, historical research and the intake got stopped because this should have been done years ago. Yeah. It has now been where they're relocating the intake on the James to someplace else and is going through the permitting process to go ahead and do this. But all the infrastructure, the backbone, all that stuff has been built and ready to go. Right. It's, it's the thing. And that will bring about a half a million gallons of water Designs crossroads. To put that in perspective, Lake Monticello uses to Louisa. Have, no, to us. Okay. Both. Well, well we we get five hundred of. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So I do know that it's it's definitely having a potential uh, dramatic impact on landowners in Fluvanna whose tributaries um, access that, and the but that's a, an entirely different argument to be had. Suppose. Are you saying it's affecting the creeks and so yeah. on? So, the the you know to kick this over a little bit to, to Woody, right? And, and what I want to talk a little bit more about is how the other jurisdictions are doing. And, and Jude, if you don't mind putting up this uh, single-family detached home values percentage difference year over year, this is as of the 31st. So, Carr came out with its Charlottesville Area Association of Realtors came out with his re report today it's a month late um, our numbers are as of July 31st but if you take a look at it across the board with the exception of 
Buckingham County, which is actually down 13%, same seven months the year before, you're looking at somewhere, you know, ranging from flat, which is Albemarle and Wintergreen, to 10%, 6%, 5%. Um, you're, in the, you're in the world every day. You're looking at stuff every day. Are you seeing globally, other than Buckingham, ink prices increasing at that, at that particular rate? For the most part, yeah. There's a few pocket uh, niche um, markets out there where they're stable, but Buckingham's the only thing we've shown any negativity in at all as far as that goes. So why is Buckingham down, man? Buckingham is, uh, it's just kind of outside of everything. It's a great county. I mean, I do a lot of work down there. Uh, there's some, but it's a big timber community. Um, I don't know that, um, and I honestly, I can't answer the question other than with anecdotal. Do you think it has more to do with the uh, fewer units being sold is resulting in a lower amount of value for what's being sold out there? Well, I mean, sure, that would be a supply and demand metric, and sure, I mean, that, that definitely can feed into it. But I, I just don't think when people think about coming to Charlottesville, they really think about it. And Buckingham is also an odd market in that it, there's two MLSs that come in there. Yeah. So if you're a, a, a realtor in Lynchburg or a realtor in Charlottesville and you're not cross-populating into the MLSs, I think that the, a lot of the agents inadvertently are not marketing it to the full potential market. You know, if you're going to market in Buckingham, you need to market, and Nelson County as well, you need to, put, you need to be listing it in both Lynchburg and in, in Charlottesville. Well, most of the activity, um, like, right on, if you're coming, if you're commuting into Charlottesville, you're just on the other side of the bridge. Right. Yeah. And I think when that slowed down, there was some new construction that went in there, and uh -huh. as all that filled up and stopped, then you kind of ran out of value, because the further you go into the, the county, you're getting yep. into some... 20-plus-year-old uh, ranchers and just lower-value properties that are even further away. So I think that's probably a part of Yeah, along 15 and then along um, 20, there's a lot of... I mean, that would be a great spot for folks if they're looking for some affordable land to, to actually buy. A lot of manufacturing homes are going up there. Buckingham doesn't have a stigma with it. They're, they're fine. Um, I mean, Clayton Homes and uh, several others do a lot of work down there. So... Um, and, you know, if, if you don't mind commuting from Scottsville, just getting on the other side of the river, I mean, it's really not that much further. Yeah. Another five, ten minutes to your, to your commute. And it's an easy drive. So from a financing perspective, just to talk a little bit about Buckingham and just to put a number to it, um, it's re Buckingham has reduced uh, first half of this year versus the second half of last year by thirty grand. Last year, the median sales price was two sixty five. Now, the first six months of this year, uh, is uh, 231. Hmm. Interesting, and we've been talking about this on the show for a while, and this is something that I've been, I've been harping on a little bit. This market right now, real estate market right now, is really floating around 2016 market as far as volume goes, because the first six months, only 33 homes were sold in uh, Buckingham, but in 2016, it was 30. So it's pretty darn, cl darn, darn close to that. But from a, from a lender's perspective, you know, I have a client that wants to go out into Buckingham. I mean, th there's nothing. This is a normal process. Is there anything from yeah. your perspective no. that that would? So so why wouldn't somebody go out to Buckingham County? Is kind of what I'm asking. Because uh, well, you know, back to the you know, the inventory conundrum. Like, what is for sale in Buckingham right now? Um, that's you know going to meet their needs. That's probably the the number one question. So um, I'm doing my best to take a look at some of the feeds over, over here, but you know, we're, we're, having, we're having kind of this roundtable discussion about affordability, right? Regardless if there should be more or less homes uh, being, being developed, you know, with $123,000 area medium income, you know, we get questions all the time about, you know, where can I afford, right? So where can I, where can I buy a home? Where is the inventory and where are we at? Uh, as far as um, ability to purchase on that end of it. And look, the reality of it is, you know, in order to hit 80% area medium income, you've got to be somewhere between 225 and 250. And the question is that I get asked all the time, where is that? And I can't find anything, even in Buckingham County. Well, that's, that's like, you. so I get calls every, you know, I'd say three times a week asking about a USDA loan. Um, and 
it it still exists. The program still exists, but the metrics in order to make a property work just don't. Uh, so you, their their housing expense alone can't exceed twenty eight percent, and that's typically a, a well credit qualified borrower that can go down, um, dependent upon. So that means a third of your income can't be going into the housing payment alone. Well, when you have uh, a minimum. And there's also an income limit attached to that as well. So if you have the, the income limit can't exceed $90,000 uh, for annual, and then uh, the housing payment alone can't exceed 30% of that, it's, it's, a tough, it's, it's tough to fit into uh, the borrower that's going to qualify for that. So um, I, I'm assuming at some point Colonial Circle is going to come up in this conversation out and, out and it's probably going to come up on the feed on on that and particularly the apartments over there and the reason my dad asked me what those huge buildings are they're called apartments <coughs> that's what they call yeah. that's what they call but but uh, the reason I wanted to get out that 123 right area median income it's important to have that number because the I believe the units can't exceed the apartments can't exceed 60% area median income, right? Is that is that correct. Right, correct on that? On that, and with a number of of 123, that puts you right around sixty thousand dollars. So that's a sixty thousand for one for a one person household to hit the hit the hit the 60% area median income of, of 123. That individual cannot make any more than $60,000. I don't know, Chris, do we know what teach, uh, 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 teachers make in? Well, starting off, I want to say the number, well, I don't I don't know exactly what they did with the budget after the it's board like approved 40 the grand, now. something like that? Oh, no, no, it's like uh, 54 got starting. It. So my uh, son's uh, sister-in-law just got hired on permanent. Uh, she get, came in on the COVID money to uh, be one of the additional instructors in Fluvian. I'm fresh out of college, and she's making a little less than that. Um, not to throw her personal information out there, but well, let's just call it fifty grand for yeah. the sake of a of, of a now, talk. Did she get that job before uh, July? Um, I think they worked her contract out before that. Yeah. Okay. Because I I think I think the starting wages for this coming school year. I, I could be wrong. I I think it's from fifty two to fifty four somewhere in there. But the point I'm making, let's call it 50 grand, just just to make yeah. things simple here yeah. and and not get too much personal. That individual, that teacher, right, can now live in Fulvana County, right? It, if she does not need to live outside of that, because there's two sides to this equation, to this HUD equation, right? The 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 the, the and I, there's a specific question I want to ask you about this, but I just want to set it up a little bit. Um, you. You can't make any more than let's call it sixty thousand dollars just to round the number up, which this person meets, your daughter or, or relative meets on that end of it. But they, the the developer or the the the, the owner of the the uh, apartment for a one bedroom cannot charge any more than one thousand one hundred and seventy two dollars because HUD sets a cap on that, a cap on that. So it's right. two sides, right? So on that on that on that end of it. Um, well, there's actually three sides. <clears throat> Third leg of the stool is the government, who is giving that developer enormous tax breaks and tax incentives. And that's my question I wanted to ask you, because I've asked this around Fulvana County, and nobody's been able to answer this. Who at the county tracks this? Right? Tracks what? What? what, what who verifies that this is actually happening? That the, that the person does meet the AMI? It's not Fluvanna. Yeah. It's, a, it's outside of Fluvanna. It's not local government. So it would be like HUD or something yeah. like that. So I know like in Albemarle and Charlottesville, they, so when we did the land trust homes, um, I needed to sign an affidavit as a chairman. The lender had to sign an affidavit as, as the lender that this income was all that kind of great stuff and it got presented to it. So we're relying on HUD to go ahead and determine I don't specifically remember that it was, let's say it was HUD. All I'm saying is it's, it's, it's not local government. It's, it's uh, mostly federal. I mean, you know, we gave them, I didn't vote for it, but we gave them 10 years of uh, zero taxes on the apartment buildings, and then another five years escalating 20% every year until year 15 will be the first year they, year 15 or 16 will be the first year they pay full taxes on that 
on those buildings. So for, for 10 years, we're going to be hitting the 60 AMI, area medium income. And after but that, we're going to jump to give you an idea of what I was talking about a minute ago, so two teachers, two teachers married at the uh, Teach in Fluvanna. They want to buy a house at the lake. They find a house for $325,000, a three-bedroom, two-bath. They've got two kids, uh, and they want to try to qualify for a USDA loan, which every, every house in Fluvanna qualifies for. Uh, they make $100,000 uh, with the, uh, the HOA at the lake. Their, their total payment would be $2,800, which is over the 28% of their total income by you know, almost 400 bucks that uh, they qualify. So, they so what, do what, what's the number that they can af afford at that price like point? 275. Yeah. So I'm looking at Lake Monticello right now. I, um, I will tell you how many homes are available at that price point. Woody, while I do that, would you mind jumping in and chatting a little bit from your perspective on well, this? Well, I was um, jumping back to Buckingham real quick. I was just looking at the car uh, inventory there. There's uh, three homes there under 300,000 available right now and six pieces of land uh, under 100,000. So, I mean, Buckingham does have some opportunity and that doesn't include whatever's listed in, in Lynchburg as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough statistic, Scott. I mean, you know, two teachers can't really go into a program because they, they can't afford the real estate. That's unfortunate. And, and I guess, you know, we, we've been talking about this for years. And I don't know if it's other than just it's a great conversation for a cup of coffee and a little bit of a, of a cocktail, but, but how can we collectively fix this, right? Or is it, does it need to be fixed at all? You know, maybe some people might, at this table might have a different perspective from it, but, you know, if a te two teachers, and, and I'm looking at Lake Monticello right now, um, there is not a single home that's on list price that hits that price point. The, it starts at 280 and that home's been on the market for 41 days so that's telling me there's that's something an eternity wrong. there's something wrong with that property somewhere and then at the opposite end of that spectrum uh for the sake of the talk show i had uh, uh a company not a house for a sale company like who sells leads to real estate people uh try to sell me the 22963 zip code and i was like well Tell me how, what you're offering here. And I said, and tell me where the benefit is. Uh, and she jumps in and names off three or four price points. And as soon as she did that, I said, I said, oh, that's amazing. I said, out of how many units available? She said, in the entire zip code, there's 37 available. I said, all right, well, let's assume that 10 of those are already under contract. Uh, let's assume that leaves us 27 in the entire zip code. Uh, 15 of those are new construction. That leaves 15 other homes. And three of the ones that you just named have been on market for over 110 days. So, so like, what, you know. I, well, the I medium just, days on market right now at, in, Fulvana, in Fulvana County is under 10. Yes, but if you look at properties over six hundred thousand dollars, specifically in the yeah. lake, they've been on market for. for well, so you years. know, we talk about this on the show all the time, right? Real estate is location, price, features, condition, timing. Who do you got on the team? You know, who's on the other other sides? Other side matters. But I mean, Chris, from your from your perspective, I mean, we're 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 looking at all the jurisdictions across the board, right? There's very few jurisdictions. Uh, within the f car footprint and on the other side that we can meet that criteria to find something to buy at 275. So, you know, where are, where are this, these two teachers going to, to live? And, and Woody, you're out there and all the, I mean, are we going to, I mean, is Buckingham it? Is that where we're, we're going? Well, in the county, you've got Fork Union if there's four. But then again, you're super limited on, like, what's available there. You've got uh, a lot of some family properties that run up and down uh, 15 going into the town. Um, but there's not a, a large number of homes to begin with. So from a, from a, from a Board of Supervisors perspective, does, does this conversation... So I've <clears throat> brought up a number of times here the fact that COVID happened. Mm -hmm. um, this whole world, much less America and Fluvanna County, went in this crazy, unpredictable uh, situation that raised values on absolutely everything, skewed every metric that you could try to track and compare to. And um, 
history shows us that that has a correction. And a, I have little doubt that a correction is coming. And if I could, it's already happened, Chris. Yeah. So, so I can tell you, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking not about pricing, but volume. Right. We first six months whole total car footprint, we're actually below volume of units sold uh, than we were in 2020. So when the world was ending, yeah. we were below it. I can't remember the exact number. It's a, it's a few percentage points below it, but the prices are just are continuing to acceler accelerate. So you kind of, I think you're kind of half right, right? So the, if, if, you, if you take a, something that, will, that is flexible and you wobble it, it'll swing up here, It'll swing down here. When you're when you're done doing that, it falls back in the middle of where it was. So you can't have some freaky things up here without some freaky things down here. You know, um, Carrier Corporation. When there's conversation about whether they'd be moving some of their plants, this was a few years ago on the national scene, and um, whether Donald Trump had a role in it and so on. Carrier said, "Look, everything we do." I don't know what the number was. Let's say it's five or eight years out. Everything we do, we've planned it that far out. So to say that we react in that way um, is just not even sensible to how, to pub how a publicly traded company acts. I mean, everybody has to react, but the plan is there. So to go, oh, my gosh, look up here. Oh, my gosh, look down here. When I know something happened in the market that created um, – some some trickles and it always corrects itself i i think both inventory and price will get back to a place where um mm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna take a counterpoint on that and that i've never i'm 25 years of doing this i've never seen a market like this um covid certainly contributed to it but i think we're in a new normal um i don't see us transitioning I mean, yeah, I, I love the reference of, you know, taking a stick and shaking it, but I, I don't think we're in an alternate reality now. We're not, we're not going to go back to where we were in 2015, 2016, unless there's a huge national economic uh, happening that's going to affect it. I mean, the biggest problem, I mean, we're talking about affordable housing. It's, it, it really does come down to cost. I yeah. mean, the tradespeople, I mean, I was sitting with a, a builder a couple weeks ago, and they were telling me they haven't hired a local tradesperson in several years now because the tradespeople here in the area are very, they're very busy, thus very expensive. So they're bringing in people from other economies like Pennsylvania where they are having, where they don't have an enough work. So they'll come down and, and a whole team of them will come down and work. So the time of great unpleasantness did that. 2008 through 2010, the people we used to know, the local people that used to build our houses, that, that Scott used to work on it, they're working. They're, they're not. They never got back into the trades. Right. Never got back into the trades. Um, so that's that. But you know, Scott, from your perspective, uh, you know, are, are we? You can't find a carpenter. Yeah. Who is and and this isn't like some like racially charged statement. You can't find a carpenter over the age of 30 who is not Hispanic who actually runs a successful business. Now there's under, age, uh, under the age of 30 uh, huge Hispanic like fantastic fantastic yeah. people but that's just because of the exodus. It's a combination of things. It's America's uh, you don't go to college, you're a oh, failure. Amen. I knew we combined were with amen. combined with the time of great unpleasantness and the and the exodus from the trades and that. And I talk to people who do renovations, new build, uh, car carpenter subs uh, who are friends of mine, and uh, largely the ones that I know that are are young and good at it are are Hispanic, and uh, there it's just. It, that that is the world that we are in right now and even they cannot find good help unless they're bringing in other uh, like uh, other people from their community that it's just it just doesn't exist and they can charge what they want and if somebody doesn't like their price they go thanks there's no shortage somebody else will pay yeah. it yeah. And, and by the way same is true in virtually every other at least blue collar oriented industry. I well, mean, you, you see it every day. Good Lord, it's killing us. Yeah. And, and what restaurant is, doesn't have help wanted in the window and yep. the owner, you know, is working the bar at eight o'clock at night because he can't get in there. Well, it's a double-edged sword, right? The, 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 you can't charge um, enough to your client 
to pay somebody, you know, whatever the, whatever the, the employee's salary is, enough to, to, to keep one, to attract folks to go ahead and down, that wants to do whatever the, the rate per I, hour is. I don't is. know that I could pay enough to, to get and keep people. It's not that I can't. You literally it, could it's, not it's pay. It's kind of like what was said. They're going to go where they're, they're naming their price. Yep. They still, oh, man, there's still I, not enough people out man, there. Man, I tell you what, to me, this was, this, there was a couple of, of um, real negative impacts of the time of great unpleasantness, right? It was people that were small builders, developers, and all got out of the business. Trades people got out of the business. The second part of it is actually three. The second part of it is we went from 2 million new construction units down to 300 and stayed flat at that number for 10 years. And the third, the third reason was everybody was told go to college, yep, go into debt, go to college, and get this. Nobody was told because there was no jobs, right, at that point in time to go become a plumber. Try to find a plumber, try to pay, get a plumber you can afford, right, to go ahead and do something. Um, Jonas constantly telling me, you know, you got this damn Class A license, go make some money, yeah. go, do, go do something, right? I, I was thinking about it the other day. I don't. All I know about plumbing is hot's on the left, cold's on the right, and poop don't poop Close only down. runs downhill. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Unless it's pumped. That's a yeah, whole yeah, different yeah. story. <laughs> uh, I, I think I could my own operation with my own van, if I was looking for something to do tomorrow, I could go get my you know, get educated, get my license to do plumbing. I could make two hundred thousand dollars a year a single guy in his van. But Chris, do you know how hard it is now to get a plumber's license? Right, but it, it takes. I can figure long, my way through that. It, 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 you're looking yeah. at a five to ten year process to go ahead and get your class A plumbing. You know, my God, I got mine in '87, and I'm not going to say anything. I shouldn't say this live. Uh, as long as I pay my hundred dollars a year, I got a class A license. I'm a, you know, I could do everything from multi million dollar commercials to his chicken sack shacks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but not that he would want me to do it because I'm really not that good at it. But when you want me to do that but I, I want to pick apart this this um, thinking of that you believe Chris you believe that the values are going to drop do you you really believe that that's impending well I can tell you that um, during COVID campers and bass boats went through the roof and they're certainly coming down smokers too <laughs> smokers yeah, yeah yeah exactly everybody's got a smoker the, ev I mean Everything is starting to correct itself. And um, I, when I went two Februarys ago, I think I said this on here before, to the Miami Boat Show to pick out the boat I wanted. And I was, man, I just couldn't think, am I going to pay this much? I know how much it cost not long ago. It had gone up a third in 10 months. Yeah. And it was true on the whole show floor. And then I said, they said, well, it'll take a year for us to build it. I said, ah, I'm going to pay a third more, and it's going to take a year for me to get it. He goes, no, 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 a year for us to start building it. Mm. You're about a year and a half before you get it. And we're going to tie you into a contract that says you're going to pay what the market rate is then when we start building it, not what it is today. Right. So, so, and I so, look at all that, and I go, that crap has yeah, a but, 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 but and Woody, it is starting to. Woody, that's so not, that's not let's fair. talk about that. That is a perfect example of, of what's going on. There were supply chain issues that affected their ability to build the boats. Yeah. Right? All right. We, people keep having babies, and they don't keep building houses. So we have a long-term housing shortage, more human beings, in an area that is continuing to grow. Mm -hmm. We have a labor problem in building, and we have then municipalities limiting the number of homes that could even be built along with the land what there's two acres there's two two acres two two plots of land in, in, in Albemarle County. County thank you Jerry uh, you know just that all lot. these things so and we have very high interest rates they may not be at the highest they're going to get to but they're they're very high and we have in my opinion what is a correction on the inflation side largely due to supply side economics, yeah. not rates that have actually taken effect yet. I don't believe, one, I believe the inflation that got here took longer to get here than people thought that it would. Agreed. And we have five percentage points in Fed rate 
that has happened in the last 12 months and people think that that's what is now beginning to lower inflation and I don't believe that. I believe what is, we're now seeing is the supply side is coming into up. correction yeah. and we're another six to eight months before we feel the pain of the Fed rate. And once that happens and we start to have very impactful things happening to the economy, we'll then have cutting that goes in. We'll see lower Fed rate, lower mortgage rates, more people who qualify for the same limited number of houses. Yeah. I don't believe we have a solution to the value and the housing cost affordability problem, and I don't believe that is coming. I think there's more pain coming down the road there from a supply side problem, which is the same thing that made your boat expensive. You know, most of the business schools out there now, they really focus heavily on on-demand uh, supply. They don't want to First in, hold. first out. They, yeah, they don't want to hold. Yeah. Um, and that, that, when COVID happened, it was a perfect storm. Uh, that, and for the building industry, you know, once the um, uh, embargo on, on lumber got made it so high, or the tariffs on, on lumber made it so high but to import it, uh, from Canada it became a problem but I mean we we've gotten away from holding in warehouses to sell things to where we're gonna try to keep it as, as on the moment as we can and once we had that bump for COVID everything disappeared I, I, I'm a guitar player and I collect uh, Les Pauls uh, if you wanted to order a Les Paul from Gibson uh, it, during COVID it was gonna take you way more than a year to get it and the wood was extremely expensive um, so I mean it, 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 no matter what you're looking at and I agree with you we we really ought to be pushing these kids that are coming out of high school into the trades. I mean, you, a blue-collar job is not a bad thing. I mean, my father was a blue-collar worker. All my uncles were. I mean, they all did very well for themselves. Uh, and, you know, where you go to college for four years, you're in debt for $150,000, and it's going to take you 20 years to pay it off, and you'll be lucky if you can get a job at fifty grand a year. You know, what's, where's the upside to that? My, my whole goal with my children raising them was, so my sister was the first in my family you know, the whole lineage to go to college. And so that was, you know, oh, one of us has done it. And then my goal was to have both of my kids go to college. And I sent them, you know, yeah, I, I think I would advise my children to raise my grandchildren different these days, that, that college education isn't necessarily. It is so funny. We're having this conversation with our two daughters about our grandkids, and they're telling us this. We're not saying that to them. They're saying, look, you know, get look into the trades. Look at now, they're five, yeah. two, and seven months, right? So what the world looks like 15 years from now may be very, very different. Um, Chris, I think you're half right and you're half wrong, right? Typically the case. <laughs> um, uh, COVID did impact it, but it when COVID happened, this quick V jump up, it was kind of your point. Everybody wanted to house, everybody was buying it. What's going to get hurt and what is getting hurt is micro locations, right? So for instance, why did Buckingham County drop down? Buckingham County dropped down because during COVID, people were going out there and thinking COVID was never going to end. Winter, yeah. uh, excuse me, Nelson County is down, right? Why is that down? Because everybody moved out to thinking COVID was never going to happen. Oops. Is it that or is it that there were houses to buy at the time and they were purchased and now yeah. there's, there's what's on market isn't mm. your prime properties so those values just aren't there. If mortgage rates fell and people found out that they could capitalize on $200,000 of equity and move closer to town because yeah. that fit their needs more, you would see that increase in those more rural areas. So you are a rock star. You, you, you were what, second in the country for Ross Mortgage? Yeah. That? How many people you sit down to get a pre-application are worried about that? They they want certain. They they need a house to live in. They need to go ahead and move. You know, my God, we're we're every jurisdiction, with the exception of 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 Buckingham County, is up anywhere from flat to ten percent, five percent, seven percent, and we're at freaking seven percent interest rates. Right? So interest rates, I don't think, has an issue to... I think you're kind of making my point. So the, the places that are up have, no original have, a little bit, have a little bit more inventory, and they are... But that's not going to happen. That's the problem. And they are in areas where if you are a family and you have, you have needs that you're, you're going to pay up to be in those places, 
because you can get your kids to sporting events. You can do all these things. And if you're somebody who went out and then you have the availability to come back in, that they're they're going to sell it. So the Charlottesville money makes up zoning because I'm going to do a I'm going to do a pro forma on it isn't going to make a huge in, increase. I do this around the country. It's going to make it worse. It, it's it's it is going to make prices go through the roof. To Jerry's point, all these people coming from data. Why the hell do you think we're at 123,000? It's because of all these jobs, jobs coming in on it. Um, you know, we, we, you know, Chris. I think certain locations, like Monticello and Havana being one. Um, I think when we have this conversation next year, we're going to see probably somewhere between a seven to eight percent. I think year over year increase, and then we have this conversation two years. Increase in what? In, in, val in price, in price mm -hmm. of homes. Volume is dropping, right? The volume will continue to drop, will continue to stay flat, I think, probably at the 2016 level, right? Because there's just no more co units coming on. There's just no more of anything for people to buy. And most of the people at this table know that, you know, he knows more than anybody. I'm not actually a pretty smart guy, but you know, if there's only so much and there's so much buyers, guess what's gonna happen to price? It's going to go up. Mm -hmm. I mean, Woody, you're in this, you're in these trenches every day. Right. Is the thinking that price is going to come down anytime soon make make sense to you? Well, unless there's a national economic issue, sure. we're not going to see any. I mean, right now we don't have enough inventory to to uh, help the the buyers that are just having life happen to them. They're having an extra child they weren't planning for, or jobs moving them. There's not enough inventory on the market to to, to satiate that problem let alone people that are on the fence about possibly thinking about moving and that already have adequate housing. And I don't know if this is a, a, a COVID thing. And we had this conversation on Monday, and we're going to have some more conversation with uh, uh, three real estate agents on Friday. I know in my world, on the listing side, divorces are just going through the roof. We are constantly getting phone calls. I get constant inquiries from attorneys right now on, on divorcing. Divorces still happen. And, I, and I'm not so sure if this is, it's just, I don't ever remember, I don't track it, I don't ever remember having like every other phone call, hey, my, I've had two of them on this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my, we're, we're separating, we want you to s help sell our house. Actually, they say they want Yona, but anyway, that's a, diff yeah. <laughs> that's a different, different story. So um, from your perspective, okay. go ahead. I, I was just gonna say, you know, you mentioned that unless there's a national event or however you said it, and um, I wouldn't think of it any other way. I think, you know, everything that we've experienced is national. You know, where we're at, so much of the country is experiencing um, and, and has experienced along with us over the past uh, several years. Um, I do believe it's a national thing that's coming. But, but I'll also say... So, so expand on that. What, what, what do you think it is? Again, there just has to be a correction. There's sort of been some sort of correction, in my opinion, coming um, in the economy anyway, and then COVID hit. But, you know, I'll also say that when I go on my runs and I listen to podcasts, you know, very, very intelligent people that say... You listen to real talk, don't you? Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, the ones with the... Anyway. Uh, you know, I listen to really, really sharp people nationally recognize that say there's a crash coming and those who say it's not you know so there's good points on each side so i think there's a correction coming um but here's here's where that gets what, complicated. what's getting corrected value not not value i think there's going to be a large economic impact based on the i i don't think the that the the interest rate medicine has kicked in I think that what we've seen so far is, all right, so Fitch Services just downgraded the credit rating of America. We went from AAA to AA. That just happened in the last huge. 12, 24 hours. Yep. Um, now, here's potentially what can come along with that. If we get a lesser appetite from foreign uh, entities purchasing U.S. bonds, mm -hmm. we'll see the yield that we're already seeing which has been sub four and should have probably been around four and a quarter, go to five. So that means we could potentially see mortgage rates at 10% by the end of the year, in theory. Um, and then as the, with less appetite for bonds, higher mortgage rates going into the end of this year, a, 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 
a, just a screeching halt uh, in, in sales as things get to as crazy as they're going to be. The, the Fed rate monetary policies start to really take effect in the banking system, and we start to see some collapses. The Fed's going to be forced back into purchasing bonds again on its own, which will then start to, that'll be the first step in correction in bringing mortgage rates down. But then they're going to have to continue to offload their the additional debts that they have, and they're, then they're going to be supporting different parts of the banking system. I think that something's going to break. I am. And I got I got to tell you, we sit next there, to each. I think that's how it's going to happen. We sit next to each other, what every Wednesday for a long time, and it's just amazing how you can articulate this and break it down into it, because I've never really thought about that. Because we were having all these conversations. That I mean, is this changing your thinking that interest rates are going to go to five percent? Is double A rating? Do you think that's affecting your your calculus on it? Are you still projecting thirty year mortgages are going to drop in the beginning of next year? I think they're going to drop in the beginning of the next year. But now, do they drop from from nine to seven? And we're uh, like, yeah, yay! Yeah, 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 um, or yeah. do they drop from seven to five? I think so. At so does ten percent? So right away, there'll be a you'll be you'll see a huge first step down. Are we at the are we at the peak? I thought we were at the peak, and then shit just keeps getting worse. So uh, little years. Potentially, I don't think we're as bad as things can be. Um, and I think there are things that are happening now that are, we're start, is starting to shine light on that. And, and, and I mean that as far as how high rates can potentially go. I think that right now they're issuing alerts to lock and uh, pricing is, is getting worse. I think if we look at what uh, the national, where are we at today on, we're posting rates yesterday, we were seven and an eighth. Yeah. Yeah, you know, today, today we're about there. I think we could be worse by the end of the day. About but seven. I think this downgrade in U.S. credit will affect purchasing of U.S. bonds. Its effect in purchasing U.S. bonds will affect a, a higher mortgage rate. And I don't think we've seen the true effect of the, the Fed's. Uh, so we're looking at it now from a 20,000, 30,000 foot level nationally. The most important thing that housing's tied to is local employment. Right now, we've got very positive indicators here in the region. You know, with everything that's going on with the university, research center, and all that stuff coming in, wonderful news. Of course, those things will be affected by anything Scott's talking about. I mean, if, if we start having national corporations shirk back, um, that will affect employment coming in. But as long as we, we're, we're growing the need of workers here, there will be a demand on housing that will remain. I mean, there were, even during the Great Recession, there were sections of the country that really weren't affected by that run-up that happened prior to it, and they were largely unaffected after everybody else was, was yeah, we've been value. We were kind of stable during that. Some of us yeah. got hit by $17 million and, you know, lost everything we had. But, you know, and, you know by and far, Charlottesville um, uh, was kind of not insulated it's a really bad word to use but we didn't get hurt as bad it was interesting i was on a, i'm doing some public speaking in september in dc and i was on a round table call and we were talking about this 123 we we're talking about ami mm -hmm. right because it's going to be about housing affordability and and all that kind of great stuff i had people from miami atlanta austin Sa uh, san diego seattle on the phone and when I told them well, we were 123 AMI, everybody just went, really? Yeah. You know, they, they didn't, you know, really Charlottesville? Really Fulvana County is 123? That's I, an affluent community. I mean, there's no kidding there. Miami, I think, was under 100. Now, people would think, oh, my God, Miami, but it has a lot, of, you know, a pretty large amount of folks, some at the lower level, some at the higher level, but their AMI was not much more than 100, and I, I had to actually send a link out to everybody in it, so look, if this is me, this is HUD, I'm, I'm, this is what we're doing. So to your point, this salary thing is kind of helping us insulating. I think, even, so at 10%, is that what Chris is talking about? Is that our national uh, national hiccup I don't know if to impact housing? What, what my point being is that there, there are enough pieces in play for something to break. That's my point. Um, do yeah. I know that that specifically is it? No. And I don't, do I know think that we get to ten? No. But I think that that if I had a a path for what it looks like, I think that is the potential path. We see bonds go up. Well, well, yields go up. Yeah. Um, the appetite for them go down. 
Um, it affect housing in a more direct way than Fed policy already has. Your thirty-year um, mortgage rate. We start to see uh, that coupled with the the Fed rates actually affect business to business lending. The commercial real estate exodus affect small regional banks. Something in that cycle causes something to break enough to where the Fed is then going to have to step in and start fixing things, um, and then. As we as they do that, there's a positive effect towards housing. Now the question is, are places like uh, Texas, uh, California, uh, Arizona, any any kind of uh, Idaho? Idaho is a great example of places that uh, have their their housing boom was supported by uh, workers that were out of the office. If businesses trim back on that, how are those people in places affected? Uh, and they cut. Uh, large portions of their uh, C-suite salaries. Uh, that's where, where you'll see a lot of immediate impact in housing. In here, I, I've, all, I've said, and the footprint from D.C. has gotten bigger and bigger, oh, yeah. and that was largely insulated, uh, the, the great unpleasantness and how Northern Virginia was affected, how we are affected having the, being under the footprint of the university along with the alphabets being DIA and INJIC. Uh, I think there's a lot of support here and a, and a service economy that supports those people and places and jobs that we don't see quite the impact that the nation does, but that would be how it happens. This is an interesting conversation because we have, for a very long time, been having the conversation about, okay, well, if we're back down to five, what is that going to do to the market? What is that going to do to pricing? What is that going to do to, to the demand? Chris, when you bought your first house, do you remember what your mortgage rate was? I don't. So Been mine was 18. That was in 80s, 87, 88. It wasn't that. It was, it was 18, <laughs> 8, 18%. And people were still buying and selling, selling houses. But, but, but it, what you're talking about, though, Keith, is relative, right? So it's not where what was good 20 years ago, what's good 15 years ago. We're going from a sub 3% market, because I'm below 3% on my mortgage. I'm not going to move anytime soon because I'm not compelled. I have no reason to unless something in life comes up. So you've got all these people that are sitting there going, you know, I don't really think this is the right move. There's uncertainty, you know, with what's going to happen with everything. And, and the problem isn't selling your home. It's buying your home. And also what you're talking about at the 18% mortgage rate, um, no matter the, the housing cost in – being relative to income mm. was essentially the same, there you go. except yeah. the rate went down and yeah. now the value went up. It's the same portion of the American's income that goes into that housing. It's just less rate, yeah. more value. I, I think if we get to a double digit scenario on mortgage rates, and I, you know, I, I may be wrong, but I just don't see that happening, but you're much smarter than I am on this. I hope it doesn't happen. I'm just yeah. saying that there's a recipe out there for things to be very unpleasant. But to Woody's comment and, and, and and Chris, we, we said on the show a long time ago when two, three percent was happening. You know, I would, I'm I'm on the record of saying this is bad. This is not good uh, for two re two reasons. One is is that's not normal uh, since 1972 until now. The normal rate like 7.1 percent. That's the average rate supposedly. Also, Judah, I don't want to run a clip on. Uh uh, on, on, on any social media of me talking about 10% interest rate. <laughs> <laughs> Judah, don't do that. Uh, but um, we're happy to be on it right now, but that's okay. Um, uh, but to your point, and, and try to why, you know, assuming something weird, like all of a sudden we're in serious double digit, digit, digit thing, but if we assume we're tracking where everybody thinks we're tracking on that, the Woody Finchams of the world, which is quite a bit. It's a large percentage of the market that have bought recently that are at this 2% or refinanced down to this 2 or 3%. Because when, when it was down there, your refinancing business was pretty, pretty hot and heavy. That's inventory that's never going to end up on the market or unless there's, God forbid, a divorce or something like that. So it's only putting more pressure on the inventory side of the house. And you're, you're looking up like... Are you not thinking that you're thinking think, differently? Well, yeah, I think it comes on market for a lot of different. I think it comes. There's a lot of reasons that a third of it comes back. I think there's a lot of it that's going to stay locked up for different reasons. One of them I've talked about, which is if you had teachers that made fifty thousand dollars a year that purchased a home that they qualified for at the top of their uh, debt to income, 
they can't go sell that house and qualify at 7%. They're, they're trapped in the home. We had this, com that's exactly right. I had this conversation with multiple clients trying to sell at Lake Monticello in Fulvana County that are panicking because they have to sell. Unfortunately, they were divorces. They have to sell, but they can't. There's no, the, the, the problem that we have that we're sitting around a, a kitchen table, we're not talking about selling a house. We're talking relationship stuff which is kind of weird, but we're talking about relationship stuff because they've got to figure something else out because when they divorce, their income goes in half because they're cutting their income in half. Now they can't afford. They can't afford a rental. They can't afford to go ahead and buy because they're trapped into this 3% mortgage rate, and they're panicking. They're literally, you know, oh, my God, what are we supposed, supposed to do on this? And there's conversation of, well, Okay, well, you live on this side of the house. I'll live on that side of the house. Where are they going to go rent? Because there's no rentals available, which goes back to my number of bodies over units. Mm -hmm. And that is the other side of the value proposition here, which is there aren't enough rentals to su be supported in this market. Uh, and without the number of houses being built, it's like, where do they go? So yeah. I, good, good. No, please. You know... Um, I should add that I don't think as globally as you all do, meaning when it comes to this market and the real estate needs and so on, you know, my focus is on, of course, I think about and consider all of it. And we're all part of, of one. And I talk with supervisors from surrounding counties all the time. While at the same time, my first focus is on Fluvanna and the citizens there. And when uh you know when i when i hear regionally about how we need more homes and so on there aren't a lot of people in fluvanna saying that um it's it's not a voice that the board is hearing that much of and my dad didn't want more people more houses out there yeah and so it's it's but but it's you know I always used to talk about the come here's and the from here's and uh used to be the from here's didn't want all this and the come here's okay well they're coming here well, the come here's and the from here's are both starting to say it's starting to get a little crowded and we're starting to become either what we didn't move away from here to to experience or um we're starting to become what we moved away from when we came here and i understand the whole argument of well you're you're a come here so you're part of it too i always say at some point you know in a, in a party without a lot of people in the room everybody starts to notice when it's getting crowded whether you were already here or not Did you get and invited to parties uh, from what I remember, <laughs> yeah. Um, and um, so our responsibility in Fluvanna County is to take care of our citizens first, of course. And um, Colonial Circle, I don't believe, I, I would bet literal money that that will not be, the mass of that will not be people from Fluvanna. And so, That's a fair bet. Yeah. So um, you, we talk about the need to help keep costs down. When those people come... And when they're at 60% um, of the median income, the uh, burden on the government is going to be higher. So now you've brought all that in order to bring housing to people who need it. But now everybody in Fluvanna, including, you know, Lake Monticello is not even half of Fluvanna County. A lot About of it's 44%. Right? Yeah. So there's a lot of people in Fluvanna County, including Lake Monticello that are just trying to make ends meet. And now we're going to increase their taxes because they're going to pay for those apartment buildings. So, and I had a friend of mine specifically reach out to me to, to, to vent about that going, is there like, is there people in back rooms in, uh, in Charlottesville and Albemarle with somebody in Fluvanna going, Hey, can you take our pores? And, uh, th I mean, that's, he's like, is, you know, I've got, a, he runs a business in the county, uh, and the level of crime associated with his business has just skyrocketed in the last two or three years. Yeah. Um, whether it be with trespassing or there's a lot of st uh, stealing, uh, like after hours theft for some things that go on. Um, he's not very pleased with the, the situation, where it's at, and, and that it's not going to be people from Fluvanna that are there. Um, he's not pleased at all. If, if growth, be it business or residential brings you know flowers and rainbows then how come richmond hampton roads northern virginia and so on isn't full of flowers and rainbows they i mean there is virtually no scenario where growth doesn't raise the cost of living in the state of virginia a recent study showed 
for every dollar in residential uh, revenue or income to the to the municipality, it's on average a buck eighteen in expenses. So call it twenty percent. You're at a twenty percent loss. So if you're going to tear down more trees, get rid of more fields, and raise the taxes of everybody who lives there to get that, and you know increase traffic, crime, and so on, there's not a scenario anybody's given me of the poster child of, of where that doesn't end in that way. This almost sounds to me almost like Woodrow Wilson and isolationism before World War One, and I, and I don't mean to be negative at all no, about no. it, but here's the problem: it. we are our center region surrounded by Flubana. We've got green, which is not development averse, but Madison is. Um, no one wants to go to Buckingham for some reason. Uh, Nelson County's picking up some of it, but we've got all these contiguous counties around us that are around Charlottesville saying, hey, not here. We, it's okay. You guys go do it over there. The problem is, is that stresses the, the housing economy even more. And if, if everybody would pick in just a little bit, just, you know, if Albemarle would allow a little bit more development, Fluvanna does a little bit more development, Louisa even does even more, they're already doing a lot, uh, Green picks up some more, and then, you know, Madison is probably the most development adverse county around right now. Um, I mean, no investors are buying speculative. So, up, so I'll push back a little bit. Green County's starting to go that way. You're, you're probably not going to see much more development. They've been drinking for a fire, from a fire hose for a while. Yeah, and they're about ready to hit the brakes on that. So we're, we're at 1129, and, and we've got about another minute or two before we got to wrap up. I, do, I just do want to get this out a little bit, Chris, on, on this, on that. I think this is what's going to happen, right? Barring any crazy double digit you know let, we've got we don't know what we don't know we got to put that to the side what we do know is incomes are increasing we do know data center all these other high dollar businesses are coming into the region we got to think about it regionally what's going to happen here is you're going to have we're going to have all of us here are going to have more come here's because if i can't buy i mean I'm, I'm, we're doing this every day if i can't buy in charlottesville now more I'm buying in Fulvana County. It's going to put more pressure on prices. Prices are going to go out. My mother and father can't afford to live there. We're blessed. They can come live with us. But they're getting to the point that they can't afford to live in Fulvana County and Lake Monticello any longer. And all why I think everybody needs to think regionally on it is to Woody's point is all this pressure is going to come to us come to Fulvana County. Um, price is going to go up, and I think when we have this conversation next year, um, it's, what I'm talking about is just going to, you know, God forbid something else happens, is go ahead and, and, and solidify that prices are going to go up, go up, go up. People are going to be moving out. Some of the locals are going to get pushed out, pushed out, unfortunately. Um, and uh, we're going to have a lot more come here than than from from here, isn't it? But it's 11:31. I promised you I'd wrap up at 11:30. Go real, ahead, real jump quick, in. Keith, um, you had mentioned 123 being our AMI compared to the state of Virginia or the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's that's eighty thousand dollars. We're forty more than forty thousand dollars higher AMI than the whole state. The city, the the region of Charlotte, well, Charlottesville, Albemarle, Fulvana, Nelson, and Green is the second highest cost of living in the state of Virginia, next to Northern Virginia. That's not going to change anytime soon. No, it has, has been that way for a while. And these dollars are just going to put so much pressure around your county, Green County. You know, I think Buckingham's just a bit too far out for everybody. But that's what it's going to keep on doing. But, but it's not. It's not that far out. And I'll, I'll stop with that. Yeah, but Buckingham's not that far out. I, I get it. But uh, that's just what the market says. The market is saying we're 13% down on yeah, it. But look, amazing. gentlemen, I, I promised Jude I'd wrap up at 11.30 on that end of it. So any last words, Mr. Supervisor? Again, uh, I mean, I think the market is going to have some corrections. I, I'm not reactive. My first goal and intention is to uh, take care of Fluvanna um, in both in protection and vision for what the future looks like. And you know, I, I bet everything genuinely to that, and that's where I give my thumbs up or thumbs down. Well, I love you, and I appreciate you, you sharing that. And, Thank you. You know, you, you are a, a man of your word. That is without a doubt. What do you want? Wrap up, please. Chris, I'm glad we got you. Being a citizen of the county, man, it's, it's awesome to hear that you're, you're taking your stewardship very seriously, and thank you for that. Um, thank you. Just, you know, everybody out there listening, you know, Finchman Associates is here to help you. If you've got uh, any litigation needs as far as the appraisal stuff goes, any lenders out there, real estate agents, we're always happy to work with you. Um, just reach out. We're happy to And happy you answer to the phone on Sundays. I do. 
Well, I'm a small business person. I have no choice. And Woody's the newest member to the Board of Equalization in Fluvanna County, so thank you for your service. Appreciate it, sir. I uh, just want to say, uh, if you're out there paying attention, if you're a buyer who is not yet under contract, uh, keep an eye on things. Call your call your trusted advisors. Uh, I think this downgrade in uh, U.S. credit rating is going to have a negative impact on mortgage rates in the immediate future. Uh, so just hang in there. Um, we may see some more days on market and some more opportunity for you in the meantime. And if you've got any questions, just give us a call. We're happy to help. Thanks. Um, buy down is going to be a, a thing if we start climbing up on that buy downs are only going to work is if if we have such less amount of activity that activity needs to drop down concessions are then available to the purchaser yeah. i right? see that if we start interest rates getting up there i think you're going to start seeing some buy downs happen and that's the people who got cash that can afford to buy down the interest rates on a couple of things. But gentlemen- Or getting a concession from the sellers in order go. to execute it. Yeah. But we'll dig into that in a future show. Gentlemen, thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully, uh, Jerry, I've done a decent job. I'll find out because I'll get texts from him on it, how, how, how well I did or didn't do, but- uh, Jerry, you're not supposed to be watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've reminded him, reminded him of that. Um, Tune in on Friday. We're going to have three uh, Hispanic um, Latinx uh, realtors on, and we're going to talk about the market from, from that perspective. So thank you, everybody. Uh, pull down Real Talk with Keith Smith on Partners, and thank, uh, thank you for everybody. Have yourself a great day. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. I think we'll go home and take a nap. <laughs> yeah, what time did you get in last night?